Hi, everybody. Hope you had a great Easter weekend. We're glad that you're back joining us with uh, today. And um, really, we just want to remind you that Ladies Bible Study is back on. Of course, the Forge didn't take break, so they're continuing. Um, but we're looking forward to this next season of both Ladies Bible Study and the Forge. Thank you so much for your continued support. And again, I just want to remind you that it's easy to give. You can give through the app. You can give online. You can mail in a check. Swing by the office and drop it off. It'd be great to see you. So what we're just grateful for your support. And we pray and we know that God will bless you as you give. Now, Kim Rossi is reading scripture for us this morning. Hey everyone, today after second service, we are having a volunteer meeting for those of you who are interested in helping out with our Foothills Kids Day Camp. If you're looking for more information to maybe see how you can help, please join us after second service for the meeting. We'll see you there, bye. Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Angie. And I'm Pastor Owen. And we wanted to let you know that we are having in-person youth. And it's every Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. And it's a time of fellowship, building friendships, and fun. But also growing in our walk with Christ and learning more about Jesus. Awesome. See you there. See you there. So on Monday, April 12th, we're starting a series from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock called Pathway to Peace. And we would love for you to come. It's going to be a relationship series. It's going to last about seven weeks. And so we would like for you to come, but we'd ask that you would sign up online, register online. And then also, especially if you're bringing kids, we will have childcare provided and it's free. You get an hour without your kids, free. All you have to do though, your price for an hour without your kids for free is registering online telling us how many kids you're bringing so that we can prepare. We want to make sure that we have plenty of volunteers to help herd your kids. So we'd love to see you for Pathway to Peace starting April 12th, but please, please, please go on our website and register online. We look forward to seeing you on Monday the 12th at seven o'clock. Morning church. Today we're in Joshua 22, 21 through 24. The Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh replied to the heads of the clans of Israel, The Mighty One, God the Lord, the Mighty One, God the Lord, He knows, and let Israel know. If this has been a rebellion or a disobedience to the Lord, do not spare us this day. We, if we have built our own altar to turn away from the Lord, to offer burnt offerings, grain offerings, to sacrifice fellowship offerings on it, may God Himself call us to account. No, we did it for the fear that someday your descendants might say to ours, what do you have to do with the Lord, the God of Israel? Thank you, Kim. That was terrific. And now, here's Pastor Mark. Well, hello. And however you may be watching, we want to welcome you today. Thank you for joining us at the Foothills Church. Today's message, we're going to be talking about communication and how important it is in our relationships. Uh, I'm speaking on this message especially because uh, tomorrow... On Monday, the 12th of April at 7 o'clock, we are going to be having a relationship series, a marriage class, if you will. Um, and you're all invited, uh, whether, you're in a uh, whether you're married or not, or uh, if you're single, you're all welcome to come because it's about, it's about um, relationships. And so everyone can, can uh, uh, take advantage of this class. Starts at 7 o'clock. Child care will be provided and you'd all be welcome. Just sign it. Go on the web page and you can sign up and let us know how many kids you're bringing. If you're going to bring some kids, uh, we'd love to have you. And uh, so I want to thank you for coming. I also want to say that we've started um, uh, this uh, Sunday. Well, Easter Sunday, we had two services. And this Sunday, we have uh, service at Nine o'clock that goes to 10 and we have a service that starts at 1030 that goes to 11. And so, you know, with the vaccines becoming more available, people getting their shots, herd immunity happening, numbers are starting to, to decline. Uh, maybe you feel that it's safe to come. I want you to know that our, our uh, in, in service worship uh, time is safe. Um, and, uh, you, you know, we're, we're just trusting in God for this virus to end. But if you haven't been to church in a while, 
there's nothing like the live service. There's just nothing like being in the presence of, in, the, in the house of the Lord. And I know that you have your time with the Lord there and during this message, and this is, will continue to be available for you. But I want to encourage you, um, come out. Come out and, and uh, be a part of our uh, live service as well, the in-person service at 9 o'clock or 10.30. All right, let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Jesus, we want to thank you again for last week and Easter and all that you do in our life and all that you have done for us. You not only died on the cross for our sins, but you rose again, removing for us the sting of death. And so death no longer has this great hold over us because of your resurrection from the dead, proving that, that, that you're alive and that we will live with you, those of us who give our hearts to you. And we we want to just thank you, Lord Jesus, again for who you are in our life and what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, we pray for an anointing over this message. Amen. So we need good communication. Communication is so important. Everything, everything begins with communication. In John 1.1, 1, 1, uh, John wrote this about Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. Why did he use the word? word to describe Jesus because Jesus came as the ultimate perfect communication of God to man and so in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and then in verse 14 he said the word became flesh made his dwelling among us why so that we could know because communication is so important to know so we can be sure of who God is because of Jesus and his presence on earth and in the word that we have, the word of God that we can read. But without communication, people are left to assumptions and assuming causes problems in all relationships. Assuming causes problems. Assuming causes problems at, at, in your home. Assuming causes problems at your job. Assuming causes problems in your neighborhoods. Assuming causes problems uh, in, your, in, in marketplaces and in stores. Wherever there's assumptions, there's problems. And we're going to go to a story in Joshua chapter 22. Joshua was the leader of Israel after Moses passed away, after Moses died. He is the one, Joshua, who led the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, into the promised land, and they went to war against the people that were there. God used Israel as a form of judgment against sin and wickedness, and, and in doing so also gave them the land that he promised to Abraham and his descendants. And so they had been at war and had been going through the land, purging the land of evil for some time. And now these two and a half tribes, Reuben, the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Gad, and the half of the tribe of Manasseh were allowed to go back east of the Jordan River to the land that they had got earlier in battle with Moses. And so here's the scripture. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh built an imposing altar there by the Jordan. Why did they do this? Because they were going back across the Jordan River, and they were going to be separated from the nine and a half tribes to the west. Well, they wanted to build an altar at that site where they crossed as this witness. And so they gave the altar a name. And it was called a witness between us that the Lord is God. A witness between us as the, th the two and a half tribes that are going to be on the east of the Jordan. And also a witness to the nine and a half tribes on the other side that we're Israel too. Even though we're separated by this boundary, even though the Jordan flows through our lands, we are Israel. So that's a good thing. So the two and a half tribes, they've been released from their military duties. Now, Prior to Moses and the, and the nation of Israel, they're on their way to the promised land and they come to the land of the Amorites. And there is this king, Sihon, king of the Ammonites. Ammonites or Amorites? It's one of the two, one of the ites. And he says to them, hey, we'd like, we don't want to do, go to war with you. All we want to do is pass through your country on your main road. We'll stay on the main road. We won't eat any of your food. We won't take any of your things. And we'll even pay you to pass through. 
Sihon, king of the Ammonites, says, absolutely not. And he assembled all of, the, uh, of his people to go to war against Israel. And there was a great battle. And Israel prevailed under the leadership of Moses and under the command of Joshua, who was their commanding officer. And they took over all of the land of Sihon, king of the Ammonites. And then they, then they went similarly to the land where Og, king of Bashan, was, was king. And they said the same thing to him. We don't want to go to war with you. We just want to pass through your land. We won't take your things. We'll, we'll even pay you for the water we drink or whatever, we, whatever problems we cause. Just let us pass through in peace. No. So Og, king of Bashan, he assembles his men. They go to war. And similarly, Israel defeats Og and all of his men, and they take over the land of Bashan. So now they have these two great lands that are in their possessions. And Reuben, the, the, the leaders of Reuben, the leaders of Gad, and the leaders of Manasseh went to Moses and said, can we take this land? Rather than going into the Jordan, can we take this land to the east of Jordan? And we'd like this to be our home. Moses wasn't real keen on the idea because this wasn't part of the promised land. But Moses allowed them to do it on one condition. When we cross the Jordan to go in and we go to battle against these nations, because all of us secured this, nation, this land for you, you have to send your armies, your men, in with ours to help defeat the enemies in the promised land. And then when we're done, you can return. They said, absolutely, we will do that. And so the warriors of Reuben, the warriors of Gad, and, the, and, and half the tribe of Manasseh, those warriors, they all went and helped Israel secure the promised land. And so now they're released from their duties and they're allowed to go back east of the Jordan. Now, let me just take a second to, to explain something to you. Something that we all do maybe we all do this but maybe we're not familiar with it there's this concept it's known as God's perfect will that's no, not necessarily a concept it's an actual thing but then we have God's permissive will God's perfect will is how he wants us to live our lives it's written clearly in the Bible this is how you this is how you handle your finances this is how you handle your your wives and your or your wife and your kids this is how you are to treat your husband this is how you treat your neighbor this is how you're to treat people this is how you're to handle the government good leaders or bad leaders this is what i expect of you my perfect will it has to do with how we live our lives but do we have god's permissive will because none of us live according to god's perfect will there's things that we do that God allows. One, he's given us free will, but then also he just knows. God knows us. And so he allows us his permissive will. It's not what he wants, but what he allows. But the, here's the thing. Just because we sometimes step out of his perfect will and we do things that are not his perfect will, that are the things he allows, he still loves us. He still will work with us. What we want is to walk in his perfect will with people, with ourselves, and with him at all times. But when we step out of that, God doesn't step away from us. I want you to hear that again. When we step out of his perfect will, God doesn't step away from us. He still works with us. And even though it wasn't his promise for two and a half tribes to live on the east of the Jordan. He still allowed it and still worked with them, still loved them. They were still a part of Israel. He didn't kick them out, right? So then we're done with that. So on their way back, these, these warriors from the two and a half tribes, on their way back, they build this altar to the Lord as a reminder, as a statement, as a declaration to their children, their descendants following them, that they were servants of God. Even though they were on the other side of the Jordan, even though they were separated by this river, they were still servants of God. And they also wanted to make a declaration to the tribes to the west, the nine and a half tribes on the west side of the Jordan, that they were Israelites too. Even though they were separated by this boundary, they weren't separated in their faith. Even though they were in the permissive will of God, not the perfect will of God, they were still a part of God. That's what they wanted them to know. So to us, you know, building an altar, and even to them, may not have seemed like a big deal. But think about this. They had just been sent to purge 
a land of idol worship and all that it entailed. And listen, idol worship, it wasn't just they'd build an altar and then they'd bow down to it and pray to it. No, they would build altars and they would sacrifice their children on the altars. They would build altars and they would build shrines and then they would send it and they would sell their children as prostitutes to these altars. It was a wicked, wicked thing. It was, it was horrific. God said, with your idol worship, you do things that I wouldn't even dream of, that I couldn't even think of, that I can't even fathom. It's so wicked. And so God sent Israel in to purge the land of this idol worship. And God would say, I want you to destroy all the idols when you go in. And so now what you have here is these two and a half tribes build an altar, an idol. And so it was a big deal as far as the other nine and a half tribes were concerned. It was a big no-no, all because of an assumption. The, not, the two and a half tribes assumed, they assumed that Israel would know what they were doing. But they didn't talk about this with anybody. So they had good intentions, the two and a half tribes. They had good intentions. Maybe you do things and you have great intentions. You have good intentions for what you're doing. But without good communication, the other tribes were unaware of, of their motives. And sometimes in our relationships, we do something thinking that someone will know what we're doing and why we're doing it and we'll be fine with it. But if they don't know what you're doing, it can cause problems. What it is is assumptions. It causes assumptions. Good communication doesn't cause assumption. You don't need to assume who Jesus is. Now, there's a lot of people who assume who Jesus is. You know why they assume who Jesus is? They don't read the Bible. I talked about that last week. Jesus of Scripture is much different than Jesus of Hollywood. Jesus of Scripture is much different than Jesus of people that just have opinions about him. When you read through the Gospels and you find out just who Jesus is, you know. And once you know, you don't have to assume. So the nine and a half tribes, they're unaware of the motives. So these, these eastern tribes, these two and a half tribes, they just assumed that Israel would know what they were up to. I've done that many times. You know, whenever there's friction on our church staff, Whenever there's friction on the church staff here is because I've not been clear as a leader of what we want to do and how we want to do it. And so what it does is it leaves our staff up to assumptions, which causes frictions, causes problems. But whenever I've been clear about something, it usually settles the, the friction. Once people know, once you know in a relationship and you're sure there's confidence. You know, they didn't. These, these nine and a half tribes, they didn't. In fact, when Israel found out that these two and a half tribes built an altar at the Jordan, they assembled for war over the mix-up because they were sent to destroy idol worship. And their own people had so quickly broken faith with God that they built an altar. They, built, they, they were going to be idol worshipers after just going to war over idolatry. So they assembled this nine and a half tribes. This, this, was, this was a big deal. If only the two and a half tribes would have spoken up. If only they would have said to Joshua, we want to thank you for releasing us to go back home. Here's what we want to do. Joshua and maybe the elders, they bring the elders, the nine and a half elders, you know, the other tribes. And they say, this is what we want to do because we're going to be separated by the Jordan. We don't want down the road for, for those of you on the west of the Jordan to say we don't belong. We, we don't. So can we, can we erect an altar that's a reminder, not something we worship, but it's a reminder that we worship. It will be like this, this, this milestone. This is what we did. And this is who we are moving forward. And I'm sure that the other, the other tribes and Joshua said, you know what, that's a great idea. Let's go. We're going to go with you. And we're going to do a celebration together. 
that even though you're separated by the Jordan River, you're still a part of us. And they only spoke up and said, this is what we intend to do. What do you think? What do you think, Joshua? So immediately, because they assembled for war, they sent elders to the two and a half tribes and they said, how could you break faith with God, with the God of Israel like this? How could you do this? How could you turn away from the Lord to build yourselves an altar in, in rebellion against him now? Now, why do they say now? After all that we did to purge the land of the promised land, now you go and do this? You break faith and turn away from God so quickly? And this is what Moses had warned you about. He warned you that on the east side of the Jordan, if you weren't with the other tribes, it's going to be more difficult for you to follow God. It's more difficult to follow God in the permissive will than it is in his perfect will. How could you do this? See, but now these other tribes, they had their share of presumptions as well. You know, they assumed so quickly, didn't they? So quickly they judged that the two and a half tribes broke faith with God, which they hadn't. They hadn't broke faith with God. In fact, they were doing this as a, as a statement of their faith. The very thing they were intending to do because they weren't clear caused a mix up. A big mix-up. They hadn't broken faith with God, but it looked like they had. There's a lot of things that we do when we're not clear. It looks one way to us. It looks an, another way to somebody else. If we just speak up and be clear about what we're doing, then they'd go, okay. See, they concluded that they needed to be dealt with. That's why they assembled for war. And so without communication, both sides, the nine and a half tribes, and the two, there would have been casualties on both sides if they'd gone to war. Both sides would have been injured by this. And it may have caused a greater divide than the Jordan River. Everyone's in peril without good communication. Everyone in a relationship. Your kids are in peril when you're not clear, mother and father, about what you expect from them. Husbands and wives, your, your marriage is in peril when you're not clear with one another. When you don't speak up, when you don't, when you don't talk. Companies are in peril. Companies are in danger when they don't communicate with their employees and their staff and their customers what's expected. It's important. It's so important. And the trouble begins with not knowing. This is why so many people are in trouble in their lives and, and away from God. Is they don't know God. And they don't know God because they don't take the time to know God. And so they're left to in uh, assume what they think or they rely on others assumptions of God so rather than being informed with truth you're left to make up your own opinion you're left to form your own opinion and we know about opinions they're like noses everyone has them and they all smell truth Firms up relationships, communication, speaking truth, sets boundaries, and, it, and it, it, it clears all the muddied waters. Assuming causes problems, but clarity clears them up. This is what the uh, two and a half tribes said to Joshua and the, the elders that assembled. No. No. We did it for fear that someday your descendants might say, what do you have to do with the Lord, the God of Israel? We did it as a protection. We did it to, to be clear to our people. They just weren't clear to the nine and a half tribes. They wanted to be clear. They wanted this altar to clear up any um, dispute that they were followers of God, even though they were on the wrong side of the Jordan. They didn't clear it up with the other side. And that's the thing. Clarity has to be clear on both sides. On both sides. Make yourself, don't just be clear with yourself because this other person may not know. They may be forming an opinion because you're not clear. So all it took to avoid a war was a simple yet courageous conversation. Why did it take a courageous conversation? Why did I put the word courageous in there? I thought about this and I, I really think that the two and a half tribes uh, uh, Reuben, Gad, and half of Manasseh, they knew that they were on the wrong side of the Jordan. 
They knew that. Moses told them that. Moses told them, no, no, no. You should go with us. We would be stronger together than if we were separated. The 12 tribes would be stronger in the promised land. We might have a little less land, but we would be stronger to, to retain it than if we are broken or divided. And so they already knew that what they were doing was not the perfect will of God. I think sometimes when we're not in the perfect will of God, but we're doing kind of our own thing, we know it's not exactly right. It may not be wicked, it may not be evil, but we know it's not exactly right. And so we're not as clear about our intentions and what we're doing in those cases than when we know that we know that we know that we're doing the right thing. And so I think, and I'm assuming here myself, this is a conjecture of mine, is that that two and a half tribes maybe weren't quite that clear because they weren't quite that confident that what they were doing was really the, the best thing. It was an okay thing, not the best thing. So it's not always easy to express ourselves, especially in those conditions, as I just outlined. But it is necessary if we want to clear up a matter and bring unity. See, once they said, no, here's why we did this, the other tribes went, oh, well, that makes sense. Okay. So now that the, the, the nine and a half tribes were unified with the two and a half tribes, that this is what this altar means. It's a witness that God is the, that they are worshipers of God too. So we need, we need to express ourselves, even though it's sometimes difficult. We sometimes don't know how it's going to be received. But if we're going to have unity in our relationships, we have to be clear. So once the two and a half tribes told the elders of Israel what they were up to, the problem was resolved. How, much, how many problems in your relationships could be resolved with just clear communication? My wife loves to watch Hallmark movies. If a man wrote a Hallmark movie, it'd be resolved in about 15 minutes. Because there'd be, you know, I mean, he wouldn't go for all the, the, the goofy stuff. The romantic stuff, sorry to say, I would, I would, what I would, I, I shouldn't say men, I would say me. I could write one in 15 minutes. Couple meets, it's a cute meet. Then they talk about it, they have some coffee, next thing you know they're dating, then they're getting married. But there's no drama there. That's just stuff happens and it's over. But to have a two hour drama, you gotta have a lot of miscommunications, misdirections. You have to have a couple that's interested in each other, but then she sees him out of the corner of a, of a maybe she's at a restaurant, she sees uh, him getting out of a car with another woman who happens to be his sister, but she doesn't know that. She thinks he's seeing somebody else. And so she says, forget it. She's going to go back to New York and work as an attorney again rather than live in this little hometown. <laughs> happens all the time. That's how, but that's how, I don't know, I used to watch Cheers. I used to watch Cheers years ago. I loved Cheers. Sam and Diane, they should have just spoke to each other. Hey, I'm, I'm interested in you. It would have resolved all the sexual tension. Of course, the show wouldn't have been as funny. It would have been over. But Hollywood likes to have a lot of assumptions and a lot of miscommunications to keep the drama up. We don't need the drama in our marriages. Not in real life. You don't need the dramas in your relationship. Clarity puts an end to the drama. Speaking up resolves, resolves the problem. So why didn't the two and a half tribes speak up earlier? Well, as I said earlier, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure they were, they were confident in their actions, but I also think that they, they didn't factor in how their actions would affect others. But I want you to know this, they always do. What we are doing affects others. So be clear about what you're doing and be confident in what you're doing. If you're confident in what you're doing, you're, it's easier to be clear about what you're doing. You don't have to hide. You don't have to fudge. You don't have to cheat. You don't have to wrangle a situation or manipulate a situation. You just be clear about it. 
See, for our, our relationships, our families, our jobs, our friends, our neighbors, if they're to thrive, we have to talk it out in order to work it out. We have to talk it out. Be clear. Speak up. If you're bothered by something that your spouse is doing, find a good time. Pray about it before. Find a good time. Sit down and say, hey, can we talk about something? Joni's done that with me numerous times. I've had to do that with her once. She's had to do that with me hundreds. She's gotten really good at it. Hey, can we sit down and talk about something? You're, you're, you're doing something or you said something that, 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 that makes me feel this way. Is this how you want me to feel? No. No. Sometimes when I'm a little stubborn and mean, I say, yeah, that's how I meant you to feel. And then that causes another conversation. You got to talk it out if you're going to work it out. If you're going to have a good relationship. In any, in any, bosses, be clear with your employees what you want, what you expect. And be reasonable, too. My goodness, be reasonable with your expectations. They're just people. Employees, be clear with your, with your authorities about what you're doing. If you want that relationship to thrive, it's important. I love what, what the... Um, Two and a half tribes continued on in their conversation with the elders of, of the nine and a half tribes in Joshua. They said, on the contrary, it's to be a witness between us and you and the generations that follow that we will worship the Lord. We want to, even though we're in the permissive side of God's will, <laughs> our heart is to be in the perfect side of God's will. Share your heart. Be clear about who you are and what you're doing. It's important in your relationships. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, I just thank you how clear you were with us of who you are. You sent Jesus. You didn't just shout at us from heaven. You said, no, I'm going I'm to send one that they will be able to understand and see and, 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 and hear. And so you sent Jesus, the word, who became flesh and made his dwelling among us so that there would be no assumptions of who you are, God, I love how Hebrews chapter 1 says that Jesus was the exact representation of you, God. Jesus, I just, I thank you for being so clear with us, your message, so clear with us about how we are saved, so clear with us about how we go to heaven, so clear with us about how we're to love one another, so clear with us about how we're to forgive, so clear with us about how we're to serve, so clear with us about how we're to engage with people. And you, you not only told us, you showed us. And as Peter said, you left an example that we should follow in your steps. That's how clear you were. So Father, there should be no assumptions on our part of who you are and your intentions in our life because you've made it so clear to us. We want to thank you how you model that clarity in order to bring us into union with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being a part of today's message. And God bless you. Tomorrow night begins our, our uh, relationship class. Love for you to come. Seven o'clock. Have a great day.